hello and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So it is Sunday, August 22nd. It is late in the afternoon. I meant to start this vlog much earlier, but this week I think what we're going to be working on is reading Jade War. So this is the last week in August. My August TBR is completed, so I'm just kind of reading whatever I feel like for the rest of the month. And we're starting with Jade War, and then after that I just have a list of four books that I am deciding between every time and I'm like rolling a die to figure it out. So like, it'll be fun. So, so far this morning I have run errands. That is all I have done. I love to go to the store because I was having issues with my phone plan and I was there for several hours. So oh, I had to leave and come back and then leave and come back. And when I got there the last time I decided I was gonna bring Jade War with me. And while I was sitting there waiting, I went from page one to 93. So I waited a while, but that does mean I am already 93 pages into Jade War. So, you know, silver linings. So Jade War, I don't know why I'm holding it up if it's a, just a black book. So Jade War is the second book in the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, which is a urban fantasy series about this crime family that operates and controls the supply of jade in this one area. And in this world, there are people who can use jade to enhance their abilities, like physical perception, mental abilities, things like that. In the first book, what ends up happening is there is some synthetic jade going around that is getting people really addicted to it and is disrupting the balance between a lot of the clans, so there ends up being some tensions there. So Jade War picks off where that first one left off. My goal was to start this vlog having read none of this, but I'm very glad I brought this with me to the store because if not, I would have just been sitting there doing nothing for hours, but we got to page 92. So far I'm enjoying this. I don't have a lot of opinions yet. I usually, when I read like big fantasy series, I try to read a hundred pages in the first sitting or at least the first day that I read them because I feel like that helps me get into the world building and the setting and just get used to kind of what we're doing. And sometimes if I stop earlier than that, I find that I'm not as invested because the learning curve isn't done yet, if that makes any sense. So I don't have a lot of thoughts yet. And a lot of the first one is coming back to me as I read this. I don't know why, but I seem to have forgotten a lot of the details from Jade City. So I am glad that I'm getting a little bit of a refresher, but my plan for this evening is to make dinner. I'm gonna try to make a new soup. So that's exciting. And read maybe another 100 pages of this and get to page 200. That would be awesome progress. But yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Welcome to the vlog. <laughs> So it is Monday night, pretty late actually. I always forget to grab the, oh, there it is. So it is pretty late on Monday night. It's like 11.15 or something like that. I had a productive day after waking up two hours later than I meant to. I went on campus and I tested out all of the like technology, like I found my classroom and tested out the projector and everything. So I got everything good to go for when classes start. And then I came home and I, finished editing because I was procrastinating on that. And then I also filmed my September TBR, so this Thursday's video. Spent a little bit of time reading Jade War and then I had dinner and watched a stream for a while and now I am back reading Jade War. So I, last night, I think I stopped on page 150 or close to it and then now I am on page 228. So I will probably read for another 30-ish minutes tonight. My goal was to get to page 300 today. I'd still really like to, but I can't do that in 30 minutes and I should probably go to bed before midnight. But I wanted to make sure I actually like did an update today and I wanted to tell you guys about Jade War because I have thoughts and opinions now. My thing with the first book was I felt like I understood on a technical level that the book was good and very well done, but I didn't connect with it. Like people raved about the characters in it and I just didn't feel it the way that other people seemed to. And there was one character towards the end of Jade City, Anden, that I did start to connect with, um, but he was the only one that I really cared about. And then in this one, like I was saying earlier, it took me a while to get reestablished in the world. And now that we're here, I 
think I'm enjoying this one more than I did Jade City. We're following the same people generally that we did in the first one, and to be honest, Andon is still my favorite character by far. Uh, I really enjoy his perspectives, especially the new and interesting information and perspective that he is able to take in this book because of some events that have happened. I really enjoy him. He is wonderful and I want good things to happen to him. And that's part of why we're doing the update at this point because good things have started to happen to him and therefore I don't trust it for a second and I'm very afraid for my boy. <laughs> and even the fact that I'm having this much emotion about him and his story arc is more than I had in the first book by a long shot. So this one, again, is already... I'm connecting to this one a lot more than I did Jade City. There was also some stuff that happened earlier that made me, like, gasp out loud because I was so surprised. We took a little bit of a turn that I just wasn't ready for, and I don't know why. There's still, like, a couple of perspectives that I don't care so much about. It's really interesting because I feel like this book is intensely political with the politics between the clans and also the politics between the clans and the country and the between the countries and things like that. And I usually am a fan of really political series. And for some reason, the politics in this one, I'm just, I just don't care as much about. And I think that's part of why Jade City fell a little bit flat for me was because I didn't connect to the characters. So then that left the political plot and I didn't care about that. I still don't care as much about the political plot, except that it is a device to put the characters in situations that I find interesting. The politics themselves, I'm not as invested in as I am with a lot of other books. But again, this is going pretty well. So my goal is to get to page 300, but also my goal is to stop reading by midnight. And both of those things are not possible at the same time. So we'll see what happens. I wanted to film an update earlier, but it was storming so badly that I couldn't get any footage that didn't just have torrential downpour noises in the background. But I have made some serious progress in Jade War, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about it. So I didn't do that much this morning. I spent a while answering emails and getting like final details set up before the semester starts, like parking passes paid for and things like that. And then I went and I went shopping for clothes to teach in because I realized I didn't have enough professional clothes. But let's talk about Jade War. Last night, I think I said I wanted to go to bed by midnight or get to page 300, I think it was, that I was trying to get to. Um, I did not get to page 300. I did go to bed a little after midnight. So I did neither of the things I wanted to do, which is fun. But I think I got to like page 260-ish. Like I was, I think I was about 40 pages off. And I've read a ton of this today, like more than I thought I had. I am currently on page 452. So I've read almost 200 pages since this morning. And I don't think I'm done for the night. I think I'm gonna read a little bit more. This book is like 590 pages and I would like to leave myself 100 pages or so for tomorrow. So if I read like another 40 to 50 pages of this, I would be thrilled. But I wanted to go ahead and film now because not only has the rain died down, but there was some upsetting and dramatic things that just happened. So I think I mentioned before that I was connecting a lot to one of the characters, Andin, but not really any of the other ones. And that's not as true anymore. Shay has had some stuff that has been very difficult to read, especially the thing that I just read. If you've read Jade War, it's chapter 46, which is called Unforgivable. So, you know, that was something. That chapter was really intense and emotional and like I felt that one in my gut a little bit. So I think it's safe to say that I am kind of starting to connect with some of these characters a little bit more. I will say something that is definitely true about this one and I think I remember it being true about Jade City too is this spans like a strange amount of time to me. I feel like a lot of fantasy either spans really long periods of time with like seasons coming and going or whatever but those are usually more like zoomed out and like 
focused on the world or things like that. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but I feel like a lot of the character driven fantasy, the stuff that I tend to read is usually very focused on the day to day for the characters and there'll be like time jumps, but you're pretty much following back to back days or like significant stretches of time. Whereas in this one, I feel like you'll read a chapter and then it'll be like two months later, this happened. I think this book so far has spanned like almost two years and it's been like the con same consistent pace and plot. Like it hasn't been that we had a two year jump or that we had a, even a one year jump. It's just been that different moments have happened at different points of time. And I find that really strange. It makes sense for the plot that all of this wouldn't be happening in the course of like two months or something like that. And it's not like there's like large stretches of travel time to account for so it's just daily life goes on and nothing dramatic happens for months at a time which makes a lot of sense for the setting and the plot but it, I don't know it's not necessarily my preference I'm going to read some more of this tonight I will almost definitely finish it tomorrow I guess there's a chance I finish it tonight because I've got like less than 150 pages left so maybe but I doubt it since I've already read like 200 pages today that would be a little bit much I'm not okay Okay, so it is Wednesday afternoon and I have processed Jade War a little bit. So let's talk about this book. Oh my god. So Hi there. I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. I just got a new laptop and it was updating over there in the corner. It wasn't ready for that. So while it's figuring all that out, let's talk about Jade War. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give this like a four or a four and a half stars. I don't know. I have to think about the rating a little bit. I like this a lot more than I liked Jade City. With Jade City, I think I mentioned this already, but I had trouble connecting with a lot of what was going on. In here, it was a lot easier. And it took me probably until about 200 pages in to really connect. There was something that particularly Hilo did, which I think was around the 200-ish page mark, that got me a little bit more invested. It was just a little bit more dramatic, and I was here for it. I think this book, and both books probably, are just technically so solid like her writing is incredible the action is well written the characters are so believable like it is on a technical level extremely well written this lighting is not happening this is too much okay i've turned a little bit so more boxes but hopefully less glaring light so while i don't know if this type of story is like absolutely for me i think that's the only reason these didn't completely blow me away because i will say that especially in Jade War, but it really took the course of both of them to do this justice, Bondali has written the most believable corruption arcs that I have ever read. And it's not even just one character, it's across multiple characters. I feel like the thing that's so incredibly well done about these is these characters start off in a very different place than they end at the end of this book. Like the beginning of Jade City, the, these are not the same people. And I think what's so interesting about the way she does that is that Every single step that these people take, every single compromise that they make on their morality, every single allowance that they do throughout their entire- throughout the story makes sense. Like, you understand why they would do that, and to the point that you maybe even feel like you might do that yourself. There is nothing they do that is so out there that you're like, okay, this is just a bad person now. It's just like, little step after little step, and then suddenly you look around and we're like, oh god, how did we get here? Like, this is so well written. Even the Poppy War, which is like one of my favorite series ever, which definitely has like a corruption art kind of thing in it, that is done extremely well. I'm not trying to say it's not, but like that is done more by like large events happening that shift the person. This is just like small incremental change throughout their character and it was so well done. And I read like the last 330 pages in one day because once I got to a certain point in this book, I felt like I couldn't put it down. Like I had to see it through. This to me anyway was a huge improvement on Jade City, but it does also make me wonder if part of why I didn't like Jade City as much was just like the headspace I was in at the time. I'm not sure. Or maybe it was just that I needed time to connect with these characters a little bit more. So I'm definitely way more on board the hype train now and I'm even more excited for Jade Legacy. I really need to see how things turn out for everyone, but especially my boy Andon. I love Andon. He is my favorite character by far. Precious. And I just want good things to happen for this boy and I don't think they're going to. But I am going to be on some live reading sprints later tonight and I need to pick a book to start with. So there are like six days left in August so I could do either like one more big book, like another 600 page-ish book at the pace that I'm going, or I could do a couple of small books. Two hours later. So here's what happened. 
I spent a long time trying to figure out which two books I was going to add to my pile so that I could roll between four and pick which one I wanted to read. So I rolled and I wasn't happy with the result and I didn't want to read it. And then I thought about it. And I was like, okay, which result would I be happy with? And I think the only answer is Malice. Like, I think I just really want to read Malice right now. So I'm gonna just read Malice instead of rolling for it. I honestly don't even really know what Malice is about. I just know I've seen a lot of people reading this lately and I really, really desperately want to know if I like it. And it's just, it's been pinging on my radar so much lately and I just, my brain wants to do it. My brain wants to read Malice. Even though I am starting another fantasy series despite how many ongoing series I have, and it's one where I don't own the second or third or fourth book yet. I just own the first one. So like, it is a mistake, but I think it's a mistake I'm going to make, so let's go. <laughs> Hello, it is Friday night. I didn't do an update yesterday because quite frankly, I didn't read basically anything. I read a single chapter of Malice before I went to bed last night. It really just was not much, but yesterday I was super busy. I had my orientation and was just running errands all day long and then like had some social events later so like I just didn't have time for anything yesterday whatsoever so not much reading got done but the night before I did do some live reading sprints which were a lot of fun. Hopefully I'll be doing some more of those again in the future and I am currently about I'm about 159 pages into Malice currently so I actually I've been putting off making this update just because I don't have a lot to say yet. Usually once I get past the first hundred pages of a fantasy book that's like enough for me to get in it and kind of get what's going on. At this point I don't really have a lot of thoughts or opinions on this. So many people have been talking about this so I've seen a lot of different opinions on this and I would know that people say that the beginning of it is pretty slow and I would say that right now like I would agree. It's not that it's bothering me. It's not like I'm like, okay, when are we going to get to some action? It's just that it's not enough has happened for me to have a lot of opinions on it. I will say the writing is a little bit clunky, but like not enough that it's bothering me too much. There are a lot of characters and it is a little bit hard to keep track of, but I'm starting to get that under control. And it looks like at this point, we've kind of laid the groundwork for where the plot is going. It's just hasn't started paying off at all yet. So I am excited to see where this goes because I know this is such a well-loved series. I was hoping to be a lot further than this at this point. My goal was to finish this and start another book by the end of this vlog, but it looks like this is probably going to be Hopefully I can finish this by the end. I would love to get to like page 300 or so tonight and be about halfway done. That would be incredible. I'm not entirely sure that this is going to get finished in this vlog because this vlog actually ends on Saturday. So it's questionable, but I am definitely going to finish this before the end of the month. And I would love to have time for another book this month, but it's... We'll see. Regardless, my TBR for September is something I'm really looking forward to. I'm enjoying this so far. I don't have a lot of complaints, but I also don't have a lot of positives yet either. I feel like I'm honestly just not far enough in to have a good opinion on it. But hopefully I can use this last bit of free time that I'm going to have to finish this book. which means it is time to wrap up this vlog. I did not do a huge amount of reading or a huge amount of updating towards the latter half of this week, but I started to get a lot busier with final preparations for the semester starting, orientation class prep, like mandatory social engagements, things like that started to really kind of kick into gear. So I did not read as much as I wanted to towards the end. Let's go ahead and wrap up where I got to at the end of this week. First thing was on Sunday, I started Jade War and I did finish Jade War, I think on... Tuesday night, maybe Wednesday morning, I can't really remember, but but that was 590 pages read very early on in the week. And then on Wednesday, I picked up Malice and I have been reading Malice since then. And unfortunately, I am only 260 pages into Malice at this point. I'm gonna try to read some more tonight, but this is definitely going to roll over into next week's vlog because there is no way I am reading the rest of this tonight. So honestly, so far, I don't have a huge amount of thoughts on Malice. I am extremely neutral towards this book at this point. I know people have said that the beginning part of this is pretty slow and then towards the second half was really where they started enjoying it. So I am getting to about the point that it should start picking up, but I just don't have much positive or negative to say about this book. 
Right now, it is a pretty basic plot setup. We've got Prophecies, the Chosen One, the Son of a Blacksmith, the whole nine yards, the King's Collecting, and the God War is coming. Like, that kind of a plot, which I don't mind, but it's also, like, not a huge exciting draw to me at this point. The writing in this is at times a little bit clunky. I see what some people are saying about the dialogue, but it's not like bothering me on a level that is causing a problem for my reading experience. But if I think about it critically, like, yeah, I can acknowledge that. And I like some of our characters so far. I am intrigued by them, but I don't think there's been enough time for character work to really happen, especially since this is a multi-POV story. And there are a decent amount of characters, so we've switched between them enough that each individual one has not had quite enough page time to develop in a way that I would find satisfying yet. So on that level, the plot and the characters and the world building overall is kind of just like extremely middle of the road for me. But I have high hopes for the last half of this book, especially with the way that people talk about this book and the way that so many people have enjoyed it. And even the people who don't like it seem to have a lot of negative things to say about it. And right now I am just very meh. I am fairly certain I will still get this read before the end of August. My hope was to get this done by today and then get one more short-ish book done by the end of August, but that doesn't look like it's probably gonna happen. Overall, this was a win for me. This is still neutral, but the jury is still out. So I think total for the week, that means I read about 850 pages, which is still really good. Like I'm talking about how this has been kind of a slow reading week for the second half, but that still averages to over 100 pages a day, which my goal is usually to keep around 100 pages a day. So I am still incredibly happy with this reading week. But I think that's going to be about it for this week's vlog. In next week's vlog, we're going to finish out Malice and then probably start onto my September TBR, which is very exciting. But I think that's all I've got for you guys today. If you want to keep up with what I'm reading, I have a link to my Goodreads down in the description below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.